Good morning. Good morning. So uh, if, you're, if you've been watching the service at home and haven't been here in a while, you may not know that this uh, is our communion table. Usually we set it up uh, after we turn the video off, but today uh, we've got it set already. Um, our focus today on Advent, uh, the fourth Sunday in Advent, right before Christmas, is the connection between uh, Jesus and King David. So watch out for things in the hymns and readings and so on that have to do with kings and especially David uh, and, and how Jesus is connected there. Uh, we begin with our first hymn, which is number 527, O Savior, Precious Savior. Father, 
In holy baptism, you declared us to be your children and gathered us into your one holy church, in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins and grant us new life through your Spirit. Be in our midst, enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Shower, O heavens, from above, and let the clouds rain down righteousness. Let the earth open, that salvation and righteousness may bear fruit. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. In them he has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom leaving his chamber, and like a strong man runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the end of the heavens, and its circuit to the end of them, and there is nothing hidden from its heat. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Shower, O heavens, from above, and let the clouds rain down righteousness. Let the earth open, that salvation and righteousness may bear fruit. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come. 
and help us by your might, that by the sins which weigh that the sins which weigh us down may be quickly lifted by your grace and mercy. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the fourth Sunday in Advent is from 2 Samuel chapter 7. Now when the king, and we're talking about David here, when the king lived in his house and the Lord had given him rest from all his surrounding enemies, the king said to Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwells in a tent. And Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that is in your heart, for the Lord is with you. But the same, that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, Would you build me a house to dwell in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving about in a tent for my dwelling. In all the places where I have moved with all the people of Israel, did I speak a word with any of the judges of Israel whom I commanded to shepherd my people, Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, that you should be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and I have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may dwell in their own place, and be disturbed no more. And violent men shall afflict them no more, as formerly, from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. And your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord, we bless you. The epistle is from Romans chapter 16. Now to him who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages but has now been disclosed and through the prophetic writings has been made known to all nations, according to the command of the eternal God to bring about the obedience of faith, to the only wise God be glory forevermore through Jesus Christ. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And please stand for the, the Hallelujah verse and gospel reading. Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. 
And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated for our hymn, which is 549, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name.
turn the page to a new year. We hear people doing something they do every year. Maybe this year it's a little different, like everything else it's a little different this year. But people are reviewing the year gone by and predicting what might come in the year just ahead. From personal and family lives to government and politics, from economics and business to sports and entertainment, every aspect of life could have its own top 10 list for 2020, and its what to watch for in 2021 list as well. And admittedly, this year's lists might look different from most, but we could still do that. In our text, when David the king hints to Nathan the prophet that he intends to do something special for the Lord, the Lord quickly turns things in a different direction. The Lord takes the opportunity to review the past and make promises for the future, thus giving King David and all of us an entirely new perspective. Part of reviewing the past and looking toward the future involves taking a serious look at what we have done and what we have left undone in order to see what we want to do next. For this to work, we need God's perspective on things. We sometimes use this done and left undone phrase when we confess our sins as we take stock of our own spiritual situation in light of God's word. If we do so honestly, it prepares us to repent, to be forgiven, and to move forward in faith, pursuing God-pleasing goals. But if we lack a God's eye perspective on what we have done and what we have left undone, we may think we have done better than we actually have. And we may proceed to set goals for ourselves that don't match up with God's will for us as he has revealed it in his holy word. That was David's problem in our text. David had conquered Jerusalem and had built himself a palace there, a high-quality home of cedar. That was what he had done. He had in mind to build a house for the Lord nearby, a sturdier one than the tent in which the Ark of the Covenant had been kept during the centuries since Moses' era. That was something he had left undone, so he planned to do it. Nathan approved David's plan, but without consulting the Lord, who had other plans, which he shared with Nathan that night, so that Nathan could pass them along to David, as a faithful prophet was supposed to do for the king he served. At the same time, besides sharing what he would do in the future, the Lord also recalled what he had done in the past. All that the Lord had done, as well as all that he would do, not only was good and right, but it was also for the benefit of his people. The Lord's history in relation to his people Israel actually parallels his interactions with David, their king, a truth that's demonstrated as the Lord reviewed what he had done. God brought Israel up from Egypt. He also took David from the pasture. God moved about with the Israelites living in a tent as they did, and he accompanied David wherever he went. God chose men from the tribes of Israel to shepherd them. He also ordained David as the divinely designated ruler over all Israel. And more to the point of today's text, God had never asked anyone in Israel to build him a cedar house, so he questioned David's bright idea to build him such a house. Besides all of that, the peaceful moment that inspired David to propose doing a building project was God's doing as well. In cutting off David's enemies, God was also delivering Israel from oppressors. These were all things that God had done. Having established how much he had done for his people and their king in the past, the Lord next proceeded to make four great promises to David, which of course point towards the future. That's what promises do. First, he would give David a great name. And there are really only three great names in the Old Testament, Abraham, David, and Yahweh. That is the name the Lord revealed as his own, I am. The one making these promises thus had either raised Abraham and David to his own level, or he had lowered himself to their level somehow. 
In addition, David had been designated Abraham's heir and had received the promises first given to the patriarch, including the promises of the Messiah. Second, the Lord would appoint a place for his people Israel, where they and their king, David, would no longer need to fear their enemies. This promise had already been partially fulfilled since the days of Israel's conquest of the land under Joshua, but it would not be completely fulfilled until God chose a place to put his name and dwell there. Since David had recently brought the ark that bore God's name to its resting place in Jerusalem, he logically concluded that his next task should be to build a temple to house it securely, thus giving God's people a picture of their own permanent future home. But as we've said, God had other plans. The third promise is the longest and most detailed of the four promises. Here, God turns David's building plans upside down, telling the king who wished to build him a house, that is a temple, that he had a bigger and better plan. God would build David a house, that is, a royal dynasty, and establish his kingdom by raising up one of David's descendants who would come from his own body and would build a house for the Lord's name. The descendant would be the Lord's own son, and the Lord would be his father, disciplining him as a father would. The Lord would never remove his favor from this descendant as he had from Israel's first king, Saul. In some ways, David's immediate heir to the throne, his son Solomon, fulfilled these conditions, but in other ways, the promise was several sizes too big for any mere man. Solomon built the temple David had wanted to build, but Jesus spoke of his own body as the temple. Solomon, despite his great wisdom, sinned in some serious ways and experienced divine discipline as a result. Yet the Lord never completely removed his favor or revoked his promises to David's dynasty, from which Jesus eventually came. God adopted Solomon as his son when he became king. Jesus was and is the only begotten son of the Heavenly Father, and eternally so. Not only that, any discipline that Jesus ever received, he bore vicariously for the sins of others, as he suffered innocently what we deserved and died our death on the cross. We, who by baptism into the divine name and faith in God's promises are royal subjects of Jesus' kingdom and are even counted as his heirs, can live now and eternally without fear of our enemies knowing that God's promises to David have reached us through David's offspring via the Virgin Mary, namely our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord's fourth and final promise to King David required King Jesus for its fulfillment. His house, his kingdom, and his throne will last forever, and he shares all of that with his own. Whatever we have done or left undone, our Lord has done all that is necessary to make these promises come true for us and for all who believe in him. When he was born, they laid him in a manger, since nowhere else was available. And later in his life, it said he had nowhere to lay his head. But he is now preparing places for us among the many dwellings in his father's house, and he will come again to take us to himself, so that where he is, we may be also. Secure in that hope, we face each new year confidently, knowing that in 2021 and in every year of our lives, God's unwavering favor rests on all who trust his Son, who is now and ever both David's Lord and David's heir. He who has brought us in safety to this day will also accompany us to our journey's end, where we will encounter him face to face at last in our own eternal home. Amen. And we continue with the prayer of the church. Please stand as we do that. And there's one item that's in your printed prayer list, but maybe just a, a, a little bit more uh, mention of that. Uh, the father of our uh, school principal, of the Emanuel Lutheran School principal, Pam Bierbaum, her dad had uh, open heart surgery in Minnesota on Friday.
returned to the operating room yesterday for a, a, a further procedure, but he's doing well. Um, so his name is Don, and we keep him in our prayers today. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Keep your saints from every folly that would turn them from your words of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You sent John to proclaim the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Richly and daily forgive our sins and the sins of all believers. Bless Matthew, our Synod President, Timothy, our District President, another Timothy, our Circuit Visitor, and all pastors in Christ. Gather and preserve your holy Christian church by your voice. Send us faithful preachers who will not deny but confess your truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Father, be the source of strength and comfort in every home. Bless our families that every darkness would be, would be lightened by your Son's gracious visitation. Send your birthday blessing on Tara, Julie, Carolyn, Melinda, Lois, Pamela, Sophia, and Alex. Sanctify them and all your children completely, that their whole spirit, soul, and body may be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give wisdom and success to our nation and its leaders. Behold in mercy all who are in authority over us and those who have been newly elected. Preserve our land and its citizens in peace and harmony. Protect all who serve in harm's way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our thanks in every circumstance for your kindness in Christ Jesus and for the certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life with him. We pray especially for Don as he heals from having open heart surgery. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Give us faith to believe the New Testament in your blood, to seek your holy supper for the forgiveness of our sins, and to confess your truth with honest hearts in communion with one another at this altar today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Into your hands, Father, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated and take this time to uh, meditate on God's Word and pray individually on your own.
Please stand as we continue with the communion liturgy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, and Everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him to death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. mercy you sent your servant John the Baptist to proclaim that in Christ the kingdom of heaven draws near. With thankful hearts we pray, come Lord Jesus, confident that in his body and blood given us to eat and drink, we receive the forgiveness of sins and so proclaim his death until he comes again in glory. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
announcements, uh, mostly for the um, online folks, the folks watching at home, um, but also for you. Um, a reminder that uh, reservations are tight for our three Christmas services. Um, the 4 o'clock Christmas Eve and the 10 o'clock Christmas Day are at capacity, but we do still have seats at 7 p.m. So if you have not made a reservation yet, or if you know somebody who still wants to get here for church on Christmas, please let them know 7 o'clock Christmas Eve, but call either me or the church office so we know you're coming. That would help us a lot. Um, also, the next two weekends, because we have weddings on Saturday, there will not be a Saturday service either of those days, so we'll only have Sunday. So things might be a little tight for the next two Sundays as well, um, but we'll still be recording and posting them at, uh, so you can watch. Um, but again, if you'd like to be here on Sunday, please let us know as soon as possible so that we can get you in. Right? And then we'll go back after that, after the next two weekends, we'll be back on the Saturday-Sunday schedule again. Um, I think that's all I've got for right now, so we'll uh, finish setting up for community distribution.